Special relativity focuses on the fact that without some external reference, it's impossible to tell whether you're moving or sitting still. There you are on an airplane, drinking a cup of coffee. You're at rest relative to the airplane, but you're moving 700 kilometers per hour relative to the surface of Earth. Relative to the sun, you're moving in orbit at a speed of about 108,000 kilometers per hour. Close the windows, and who knows, you might as well be in a flight simulator. Speed can only be measured relative to some external reference. In the absence of that external reference, there's no experiment you can do to tell whether you're moving or not. To put it another way, relative to yourself, relative to your own frame of reference, you're never moving at all. You're sitting still. So if we stick within one's own frame of reference, the idea of motion has no meaning. Any experiment you conduct purely within your own frame of reference should in no way be affected by whether or not you're moving relative to something else. And when I say moving, I mean moving in a uniform manner. That means no acceleration. While it's easy to design an experiment to tell whether or not you're accelerating, experiments to tell whether you're moving or not can't be done without referring to some external reference. So measure the speed of light, and you'll find it to be the same, regardless of your motion. Now, I'm ready to show you some funky scenarios. Buckle your seatbelts. As I walk you through these scenarios, through these thought experiments, you'll see that a consequence of the speed of light being constant is that space and time become warped. You're in the middle of a spaceship traveling at super high speeds, such as half the speed of light. There's a light fixed exactly halfway between the front and back walls on the ceiling. A pulse of light is sent out. The distances to the front and back of the ship are identical. So the light hits the two walls simultaneously. That's from your point of view. Your ship whizzes past a planet where an observer notes something very different about the very same situation. Because the ship is moving so fast, the back wall is traveling toward the light beam while the front wall is receding away. So clearly, the light hits the back wall first, followed by the front wall. So what the astronaut sees as simultaneous, the planet-bound observer sees as clearly not simultaneous. I recommend you hit the pause button now to think carefully about that. Nice if someone is with you so you can share your thoughts. How can an event be simultaneous to one observer, yet non-simultaneous to another? All right, here's the next scenario. You're in a ship traveling at super high speed, say half the speed of light. On board, you have two perfectly parallel mirrors. A beam of light bounces back and forth. Each bounce you identify as one tick on a clock. So what you have here is a light clock. To make things easy, let's say one tick of this clock equals one second. You watch the light go up and down, and there you have two seconds. That's from your point of view on the ship. Now, your ship, which happens to be transparent, whizzes past a planet where an observer notes something very different. Because the ship is moving so fast, she sees the light beam travel at an angle, which means it has farther to travel. Because the speed of light is constant, that means it'll take more time. She measures the time it takes for the light to go up and down, and she finds that to be 2.8 seconds. So while the up and down travel of the light for the astronaut took two seconds, for the planet-bound observer, she's experienced 2.8 seconds. For the same event, they experience different durations of time. Maybe you need to hit the pause button to think about this. If not, you will when I ask you the following. What if the light clock is not on the ship? But on the planet. Another great thought experiment you should explore is the twin trip, which you'll find as one of our worksheet practice pages. 
In this scenario, one twin leaves his brother behind, travels into space, comes back having aged less than his stay-at-home brother. It's really cool. And yet another consequence of the speed of light being constant across all frames of reference. And if you're bugged as to why one brother necessarily ages more than the other, the answer lies in that only one of the brothers undergoes acceleration. How we move ourselves from one frame of reference to another is by acceleration. Of course, according to general relativity, you can also change your frame of reference by cozying up to a huge, dense ball of mass, such as a planet. <laughs> you want a big change in your frame of reference? Choose a big planet. And the denser the planet, the better. Heck, try a neutron star or even a black hole. So how can two people within the same universe experience different durations over the same event? At the heart of our confusion is the fact that we're three-dimensional creatures living within four-dimensional space-time. Consider two off-duty astronauts sitting together in a lounge admiring a coffee table. They decide to take pictures of this beautiful coffee table from many different angles. They print out these pictures on flat two-dimensional sheets of paper. Which one picture should they choose to best represent the coffee table? It's quickly obvious to them that each picture of the coffee table looks different, and no single two-dimensional photograph can accurately describe the whole three-dimensional object. Likewise, space-time is four-dimensional, which is something we three-dimensional creatures can look at from different perspectives. Two space-traveling astronauts in different ships moving at different speeds will have different perspectives when they get back together to compare their experiences, which are their three-dimensional snapshots. We call them videos. They can well expect that they've seen different angles of the same thing. One astronaut may have aged one year while the other aged two years, but all the while they were both enjoying the same universe, which is the same space-time. Just as there are many ways to experience a coffee table, there are also many ways we can experience space-time. It's important to note the relativistic nature of time in both special and general relativity. In both theories, there's no way you can extend the duration of your own experience. Others moving at different speeds or in different gravitational fields may attribute a great longevity to you, but your longevity is seen from their frame of reference, never your own. Changes in time and other relativistic effects are always attributed to the other guy. That's relativity. There's so much more to explore regarding relativity. We've barely scratched the surface but I would be amiss not to mention its effects on space travel. The star Procyon is 10.4 light years distant, which means it takes like 10.4 years for light to travel that distance between our sun and this star, or 20.8 years to make a round trip. Astronauts traveling at 99% the speed of light, however, would make this round trip in only three years but they would return home to find their friends and family now 20.8 years older. At faster speeds and greater distances, the time-bending effects become even more pronounced. So let me leave you with what I think is an ultimate brain teaser, as though your brain hasn't been teased enough. You're on a rocket ship, orbiting your home planet, and you're now ready to leave for a neighboring galaxy. You turn on the engines so that you start accelerating toward this distant galaxy at a constant rate of 1g, which is 9.82 meters per second squared. At 1g, you know, you, you'll have the comfort of being able to stand up as though you're on Earth. Here's the question. How long does it take you to reach the speed of light? Answer this from, one, your perspective on the ship, and two, from the perspective of your friends and family on your home planet. And then start thinking about some of the technical issues you might run into for such a journey. 
delicious stuff and a very good start. Good science to you. <laughs>